Okay, so I've seen some other people do this project, but um, one thing I've noticed about all of them is they basically send the image data from the car to a computer that is more powerful to process that data and then send it back to the Pi. You know My goal for the project is to ultimately have a train on these yellow sticky notes so that it'll follow these sticky notes. And all I need is that uh, battery and that setup on the car, no computer. So I'm basically gonna try to do all of the um, image recognition and classification all on the Raspberry Pi mounted on the computer, which I think is a tough task for the Raspberry Pi, but I'm basically going with as minimal training data as I can. Okay, so I ordered this car off Amazon, and it's a Race Star remote controlled car. That'll give it left and right movement, forward and backward. Okay, so for this project, in order to um, talk to the Pi from this computer, I'm going to use uh, SSH through terminal on Mac OS X. I'm also going to be using Microsoft Remote Desktop to have a user interface so I can see what the Pi's computer is say, um, seeing. And I've attached a knockoff GoPro to the front to take the images. I'm using a little motor controller right there, so that way I don't have to rely on the Raspberry Pi to power the um, motors because I was worried that would burn out the Pi. So instead, I use um, the Pi's GPIO pins. So here I am beginning to uh, write the code that's going to control the motors of the car while I'm testing it out. And that's going to allow me to have that output in addition to writing the camera view. I lay down all these sticky notes. And this is what's going to make up the path for what the car will eventually follow. Then I start up the program that records the images and I run the car back and forth by hand and it's taking hundreds and hundreds of images that I will eventually classify later on. So I'm going down the track and recording everything from going straight to making turns so that way I can collect enough um, different data categories to fill out my training data. I'm going to open up this folder here. So basically using this Python script right here, which I'm going to show you. Okay, so what this does is it um, imports rpi.gpio, which allows us to access the general uh, input-output pins on the Raspberry Pi. So our last class here is called Car Move, and so basically it's an infinite loop, and I'm using uh, the click module, uh, the Python click module, to grab a character key from terminal, whatever the user hits. I'm doing WASD for the controls, it goes forward for that amount, keys S, backwards, and so on and so forth. So I can show you right now what this looks like in the car when I run it. So basically I'm going to open up the secure shell here. Okay, so here's what I'm going to hit. Um, we have, would you like to be test drive and collect data or M drive autonomously? And right now we're going to be test driving, so I'm going to hit B. And right now I am secure shelling from... Um, in my personal computer, which is a Mac, so I'm going to hit H. Okay, so it's just going to tell me that cam view is not possible because I am from a, on another computer right now. I am working on adding that though. Okay, so you should be able to see, you should be able to see right about now that um, I am able to control using WASD, I am able to control the motors autonomously like this. And I can show you right here. Okay, so right now I'm going to go test drive the car with the SSH going on, and you can see this is the car right now without anything attached. There's the car, the wheels will turn like this, the back wheel spin forward and backward, and I'm going to be using this portable power bank right here with this small uh, cable that has a micro USB, and I'm just going to plug it right into the Pi and run a secure shell for my computer and see how the controlling works right now. If we push the power button there, the Pi will start to boot up, and open up Microsoft Remote Desktop here. Log into the Pi, which I already have preset up. And you're going to be able to see here when I open up that if I type in. Um, that's going to bring us to your user interface. Would you like to be test drive and collect data and am autonomous? So I just added the camera support. So now we can see what the car is going to be seeing. Um, so I'll show you that. So we're going to hit B.
it's gonna say test drive are you using g pi or hpc and although i am on my personal computer i'm going to hit pi because we want to see the visual that's going to start right up for us so now we can see live right here what the pi is seeing which is pretty cool so i'm going to go around and say hi to it there's my hand hi hi so um i'm going to give it a quick quick test drive so you can see here um you hit w the pi moves forward like you'll see it update just like that i can move backwards just like that this script takes in photo data from my GoPro SD card that I've inloaded, and it outputs all the photos from all the different folders into one big photo, uh, one big folder that holds all the training images, and it renames them um, one through the amount of data there is in there, the amount of photos. So that's what's happening right now. So I'm gonna drag and drop um, each individual image which I'm taking from um, this GoPro I'm filming with right now. And I'm gonna take that onto an SD card and then drag that onto the computer and separate that out into folders. So this function is going to allow me to classify my images one by one. I'm gonna add each of the paths to the folders I want the selected image to go to, one for each direction. I'm going to iterate through each photo in the folder of photos I just made. Adding these if statements are going to allow me to type in which folder I want it to be saved in. W forward, A left, and D right. I'm going to run the function I just created, and that's going to show me an image, and I type in which direction folder I want it to be saved in, and this process will be repeated for each of the thousands and thousands of photos that are in my training data set. Okay, so I've basically been working for the last couple hours. It's getting super, super annoying because um, I have to do it by hand. Um, I don't think this is the best route. I'm going to try to come up with something else to do, but if I can't, then I'm going to have to continue with this. And after selecting and adding the training data, I'm going to start working on making the neural network. I'm going to import all of my modules, including TensorFlow and Keras, so I can work on the neural network. The first function is going to input data from each of the four category folders. It's going to add a label to that data. It's going to format it, and it's going to pass that into the function that will have the neural network in it. So the next function that is the neural network is going to accept the X for the data and the Y for the labels that go with the training data. And I'm going to start by writing the neural network each layer. I'm using the ReLU activation function and a sigmoid activation uh, method after four dense layers. I'm using the Atom Optimizer as well, and I trained it for 23 epochs, or excuse me, 3 epochs. I'm going to start by importing all the data, and I'm going to run the function we just did to start training the data using TensorFlow. You can see the accuracy on the side is right now at 54%. And this will ultimately get to around 85% by the time I'm done. However, it's not shown in this clip.
Okay, so here I'm making the function that will be the one ultimately to run the car in full driverless mode. It's going to import the model that I saved as well as all the folders in the paths. It's going to take an image using OpenCV and a webcam I have connected to the front of the car. It's going to process that data, throw it into the neural network, and it's going to output a array of percentage chance percentage predictions for each direction. As a test, I'm going to run the self-driving prediction to see what it says um, when I'm just leaving it lying on the ground. You can see it's now returning an array of percentage percentages it thinks, and the first one is forward, the second one represents left, the third one right, and the fourth one stop. And whichever is the highest number is the one that the neural network chose. Time to test the car. Okay guys, here's the final working model. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. One big takeaway I have from this project is to make sure that the training data matches exactly what the application data will be once you're actually using the final neural network. While I was creating the car, I took photos for the training data by holding a GoPro on top, um, a GoPro a few inches off the ground and taking a bunch of photos and classifying them. Um, when I ultimately attached the GoPro to the car to drive it for a real test drive, the GoPro was much higher than when I was taking the photos. And because of this, the GoPro was able to see further uh, further ahead in the course. And because of this, the turns it made weren't always correct. Another thing I recommend that you do is make sure the car you get turns using servos instead of using a motor. My car turns using a motor and because of this, it can only make very bare turns, extremely bare turns. It, it couldn't make at all a sharp turn. And because it couldn't make a sharp turn, it's kind of difficult to navigate any sort of path. So I had to make the path super, super round. And um, my training data had a lot of sharp turns in it. And I classified that as a right and a left. So it classifies a lot of slight bends like it's capable of doing as going straight when in reality it should be going slightly you know, left or slightly right, depending on what it is. Um, basically, this proves the concept completely that anyone really can make a driverless car. Although it looks like I coded it quickly in the video, it actually took me about four months to make. Um, I ran into so many different bugs and so many different problems. It took me hours and hours of debugging since I really had no other reference other than the internet. Um, but there's a lot of great documentation online and I think someone can completely come up with an idea and totally apply a neural network to it. It worked great and I can't wait to come up with another project.